Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. Today is going to be the fifth in my toolbar series. We've talked about selection tools, we've talked about pen tools, text tools, and all of these line art tools here. So today we are going to go over all of these shape tools. So let me go ahead and drag this out so that we can look at everything here and we'll jump in right away. The first tool is the rectangle tool or hotkey M. And you can, uh, with all of these, do the same thing. You either click and drag to create your shape to the size you want visually, or you can click once and input your own uh, dimensions, or uh, some of these have other options as well. Um, but with the rectangle tool, that's all you get. Um, if you want to keep your height and width uh, proportional, then you would click this so that they will stay uh, the same ratio. If not, you can just come in and put it however you like and make your own. Now, whenever you click again, it's going to have that last setting that you used on all of these. That's how this works. Um, so anyway, um, if you click on this, you'll see as long as um, you have uh, hide edges is off, as long as that's off, right? If hide edges is on, you may not see everything, but make sure that's off. Um, you'll get handlers on the edges here where you can you know, grab, grab and rotate. This is just using the regular selection tool or hotkey V. And then you can also, you know, uh, constrain the vertical or the horizontal. Um, once you've made the shape, you can also grab these little um, circles and give it a rounded effect on the edge. Or if you just want to grab one, you can do your direct selection tool, hotkey A, which we've already discussed in the first video. And you can just do one of them if you need. So. Um, just a quick healthy reminder on that. Uh, the next one is the rounded rectangle tool, which as you can imagine, just makes a rectangle with rounded edges. Um, this is a fairly unnecessary um, tool to me because you can just do that on the regular rectangle tool. So I guess if you know that the thing's gonna be 10 inches by 10 inches and it needs a corner radius of one, then you know, go ahead and grab that tool and just click. So if you click, you'll get the option menu to come up, right? But to me, it's like, just use the rectangle tool, make it wherever it is, and then you can come in and, and round these yourself. You can just do this and see that you get a little preview of how much it's doing. I, you know, it's hard to kind of control it to one inch, but there I just, I just dragged it manually to one inch. You can do that. Um, so, you know, uh, I don't use the rounded rectangle tool too often. The other thing is like, even with the regular rectangle tool up here, you've got a rounded, um, option. So you can even change different corner types if you like. So to me, the rounded rectangle tool is, is kind of unnecessary. Um, but you know, for speed, you may find that there's a, a time that, uh, that's better than, than going through and doing everything manually. Like I just did. The next tool is the ellipse tool, hotkey L. And those are the only two with hotkeys in this group is the rectangle and the ellipse. But we ellipse the same way. You can click and drag to make a, a circle. Now to make a perfect circle, you have to hold shift while you do this, okay? To make keep the uh, width and height proportionate. Now, otherwise you're making an ellipse, which is not gonna be a perfect circle, but that can be you know, whatever shape and size you need there. Or again, you can click and then you'll get a dialog that uh, will pop up here that you can you can put in whatever width and height you need and constrain their proportions if necessary. So it kind of works the same way, really simple. Um, the next one we're gonna talk about is the polygon tool. Now the polygon tool is gonna have a few more options. Again, that's just me clicking and then drawing one out by, by hand, by, uh, by eye, I should say. And I'm also holding shift to keep everything proportionate. Otherwise it kind of you know, wiggles around on me like this. Now, the width and height are always going to be the same no matter what you do. So you can't have it, um, when you initially draw it, you can't have the width and height be um, disproportionate on this tool until you draw it. And then later you can come in and do that kind of stuff like this. But um, I don't know why that is. It's just the way they made the tool. Um, the other thing with this one is that you have more options. So if you click um, here and you want to have a radius, you know, let's just put it at two inches, right? And then how many sides do you want? 
you can do five and okay or you can do if you do four it's just going to be a rectangle or a square if you do three you'll get a triangle so this is how you get a triangle with the with this shape um i mean you can do lots of these I, 20 is probably going to be too much yeah so there you go you're going to have like a a sort of pixelated looking circle, right? So normally I'm going to be three, five, six, maybe. Um, one of the nice things about maybe using this tool with a six sided um, is that you can make a nice little honeycomb pattern. So maybe you come up like this and you make another and another. Oop, I don't know what that was. And another. Um, and then maybe you, you know, click and drag that over put it about there and then you can see you can start to make a honey nice honeycomb pattern that way boom 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 right so kind of a cool uh, uh, option with that shape um, the next one's the star tool same thing if I click and drag I'm gonna get a star but it's gonna be whatever my last settings were and this I believe was a hundred so this is kind of how you make a starburst um, or you can do a regular star let's just do five points and there you go nice little sort of super mario star right now with this one when you are clicking and let's just get rid of this real quick if you're clicking to make this so if i click and drag out i get you know whatever my last settings were well if you know about where you want that inner radius and by inner radius let me just make a shape so i can show you this would sort of be the inner radius where these inner points come together right and these this would be the outer radius so when you're clicking and dragging get it and you, you say you want to create the shape to make it a little bit more like a typical star and not less of this fat mario star right well you might click holding shift where um, your inner radius is where you like it and then while you're doing that hold control down and then drag some more and you'll see that the um, outer radius gets pulled out so maybe you know right in here would be more of like an american flag star right um if and now if i do this again i'm gonna get that setting because that was the last star that i made right or you can you know click it to where you want it and keep going and sort of maybe create more of a starfish look and with this just like all these others you've got the option here of coming in and and softening these up right so you can take all of the angles and soften them by rounding them maybe even that much right so you can get some really cool shapes out of these just just by making a shape and using the options that are available to you um, of course if you wanted to just make one of these long you could do that too with the direct selection tool versus the regular selection tool um, so there are lots of options here now the last one is the flare tool and this one you know i don't really like using it that often but i'll show you kind of what you can do with it um the flare tool has a lot of transparency so the first thing you want to do is create a background color and let's just start with black for now 100 percent black cmyk black right um and i'm going to go ahead and, and click on this again this is another one of those you can either click or you can Click and drag. Um, I'm going to just click and create a very standard looking one. Right Here's the options. There's a lot more options with the flare tool than there are with any of these others. I'll just hit OK. That's a standard kind of look. You usually get something like this, right? If it's, if it's not over a color, it kind of looks like this and it's very strange. But if it's over some sort of color, you get all the transparencies that are built in. Now at 100% black is kind of boring, so maybe we pull in some yellows and maybe pull in some reds uh, or magenta to kind of get like a, a red tone maybe i lower the black a little bit maybe go a little more magenta e so you can see how that affects the way this um, flare tool looks now i don't normally like this because it's just kind of cheesy and um it's going to show that you don't know really what you're doing in Illustrator if you use these everywhere. Every now and then you might use it on the edge of something metallic, you know, just to show that it's like a faux shiny kind of look. But one cool thing that you can do with this um, that might be more beneficial than that and more interesting is maybe creating like using this to create a background 
uh, that's sort of abstract. Um, so let me show you what I would do. Uh, let's do. Let's get rid of it first. I'll create another one just by clicking and dragging. I just want a single solitary flare like this. Okay, and because this has so many parts to it, I'm going to go ahead and hide the edges. So you can hit Control H or just go up there to view hide edges. So now I'm not going to see those edges with it selected. If I hover, I will, but now with the selection, I won't. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to you know squish it to make like some sort of more ovular looking shape. And then I'm going to come up here and go to Effect and then Distort and Transform, Transform. And let me bring this over here for my other monitor. Um, this is where you can have some fun. Uh, let's do an angle of, first let's hit preview, make sure you can see, and maybe angle it 20, and then copies, maybe do 20. And already you can see that that is creating something a little interesting. And I'll just zoom in here so you can see what that looks like, right? That's kind of like a nuclear looking something or other, nuclear blossom, let's call it, right? Kind of cool. Well, you know, this is all live and editable still, so we could come in here and go to Appearance. You'll find your Transform with a little FX icon over here. You can double click that to get back into your um, Transform effect and mess with the settings. Hit Preview again. What you can do is kind of change the horizontal if you want, and you can see that gets a totally different look. Maybe mess with the vertical some too, kind of gets you more of a flare. Um, you start getting a little bit of a fractal design here, maybe, if we start messing with this. Yeah. See, it sort of spirals in on itself and gets really crazy. So some fun stuff you can do there that would create a really cool background if you maybe could uh, tone it down a little bit, make it a little more subtle. Um, or you can do this and hit like a random, and you just get all sorts of interesting stuff that way. Um, you know, I kind of like the way that looks and maybe fill that in. You know, that's a really cool look and let's see what happens if we change the angle of this. Yeah, yeah, so maybe something real fuzzy and ill-defined like this. Oh, I got a, I got a notification. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, you know, lots of options here. This is your kind of copies and you can even say if you want it to align to a certain um, corner of your art which will kind of give it a slinky effect here. Or down here, it's like a nice flattened, I don't know, like space lens flare type type thing. It's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, mess around with it. You got all sorts of options here. Um, you can reflect that. Oh, that didn't do any good. Or that. But anyway, just you know, click and, and, and uh, see what these different things do. Maybe see if there's something cool in that. If it's not random, it's gonna be a nice uniform look. But as you can see, I'm getting all sorts of different looks just by uh, clicking on these and and um, playing around with it. And then, of course, you can edit this shape. Once you do, you can move it around and you'll get a little bit different look. Um, again, I think it's nice for just a, an abstract background. I could see myself using this and toning it down to maybe a 25%. And that could be in the background with you know, a main photo and some text over here and a logo or something like that. And you just created that in a couple of seconds, really. So that's how you use uh, the basic gist of all of these tools. Of course, there's so much more you can do. You've got Pathfinder options, which eventually I'll get to in this series or in another of my videos at some point. But for today, I just wanted to talk about how to use each of those shapes um, in their most basic format, and then we'll build from there. So I'll see you guys in the next video.